Live from the MGM Grand Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at Splunk.com 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Splunk. Here are your hosts, Jeff Kelly and Jeff Frick. Hi, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at the Splunk.conf 2014, the fifth annual Splunk user conference at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada. They outgrew the Cosmo, they outgrew the Aria, they outgrew everything. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Godfrey says there was 175 people at the first one five years ago. I think there's over 4,000 Splunk practitioners, employees, partners, customers, and uh, Splunkers, I guess is the right sure. word. So we're excited <laughs> to be here. It's our third year. Joined in my, uh, by my host, co-host, in this next segment. I'm Jeff Kelly from yep. Wikibon. Uh, and we're joined by Matt Olson, he's principal architect at CenturyLink. Uh, Matt, I think your first time on theCUBE, welcome. Hi, thank you, glad to be here. So tell us a little bit about CenturyLink. I think, um, mm -hmm. you know, we think CenturyLink, we think cloud. What do you, what do you guys, yep. uh, tell us a little bit about CenturyLink and your well, kind of uh, value proposition. Yeah, so we're uh, third largest telecom in the, in the U.S. and uh, grown uh, by leaps and bounds through uh, some organic growth, but also uh, merger and acquisition. Mm -hmm. And I think like uh, most of telecom right now, we're in the midst of a massive transformation really into a data services company. Mm. So that means we're, uh, we're accommodating you know, massive transformation with decline in some areas and uh, just incredible growth in others. Right, so let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. So becoming a data services company, what, is, what does that mean? Does that mean yeah. providing um, you know, analytics? Does that pro mean providing yep. data movement? What, what does that mean well, from it, your perspective? You know, first and foremost, it means providing broadband-based and uh, you know, internet-based uh, services. And uh, it really means also moving from a mode in which we're, uh, we're involved in selling pipes to a mode in which we're selling services that are running over those pipes. So it's, it's really been uh, quite a challenge in terms of uh, monitoring the performance management, which is my, my key responsibility, because uh, you need the ability to link what you're seeing in terms of the service delivery mm -hmm. with what you're seeing in terms of the underlying infrastructure and the mm -hmm. pipes and the network elements and such. So when you're delivering you know, high value services over those mm -hmm. pipes, you've got to be able to make sure those pipes are up and running and, and yeah. operating smoothly yeah. at all times. Yes, well, and, and the key is understanding what's happening end to end. Because mm -hmm. you know, you in service delivery to a customer from a uh, you know, point within the, the core of your network, you're going to traverse multiple topologies, multiple network elements, and lots of different vendors. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, each of those elements, each of those segments might look okay, but when you add it up end to end, you find it's a different story. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. talk a little bit about Splunk and how that's helping you do that. Um, it, yeah. Clearly, it's a critical part of your job and a critical part of yeah. delivering value to your customers. It's oh, it's absolutely central. And, and I think the, the key with Splunk is that we're able to break down data silos very easily. So as, as a large telecom, and a telecom that's you know, grown through acquisition especially, you have a number of different silos, you have a number of different information domains. And Splunk has really allowed us to break down the barriers between those silos and provide a, an integrated, correlated view of what's happening across those, those domains. So you know, previously, to maybe take us a little bit before and after. So you know, as you, bring, you know, before you started working with Splunk, and, um, trying to break down those silos. Mm -hmm. what, what was your approach to trying to do uh, that? Was it a manual yeah. approach? How would you go about well, doing that? We had a very traditional approach, which was based upon uh, you know, traditional row-oriented databases, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, generally you have your DBAs, you have your people focused on schema development, you have your people focused on you know, Java and GUI development, mm -hmm. and you have uh, generally multiple teams in multiple areas across those domains. So we, we started using Splunk, I think, as, as many businesses do, just for uh, for simple log parsing, you know, kind of a, a tactical spot solution, mm -hmm. and uh, then we realized that we could do prototype development very, very quickly. Because you know, the time to market, if you want to, if you want to inhale data, parse it, work with it, and then build views of it, if you're working in a traditional environment, you got to work in in each of those specialized areas. Mm -hmm. You know, you work with your your DBAs and the schema, and how do you bring in the data, and mm -hmm. then you go to work with another group in the development, and. We quickly ascertained that with, with Splunk, we were able in you know, one place, in a one-stop shop, very simply, to, uh, to prototype, all the way from data acquisition through to the useful views. Mm -hmm. And then we realized that those prototypes, well, they're fully functional as uh, you know, production operational tools. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we began to transition more of the load, more of the focus from you know, traditional, it's actually Oracle-based you know, <laughs> solutions, over to, uh, to Splunk. And mm -hmm. uh, over time, actually very quickly, um, that became our core focus. And uh, mm -hmm. we, we kind of uh, 
pushed aside the, the old legacy uh, solution. Interesting. So, mm -hmm. Godfrey Sullivan, the CEO, at his keynote yesterday, talked a little bit about supporting. Well, first he talked about you know, mm -hmm. seeing from customers the need mm -hmm. to do this kind of rapid application yeah. and development yes. and, and rolling it out as fast yes. as possible. Kind of this, and we've talked to customers yesterday around kind of the whole DevOps and where Splunk fits yep. in there. Yep. Um, it sounds like that's one of the key value propositions for oh, you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, can you maybe give us an example? Add a little color. I mean, what's what's one mm -hmm. of the use cases or one of the coolest things you found, or maybe not coolest, one of the uh -huh. most you know important things that you found mm -hmm. uh, using that approach? Well, I think uh, first and foremost, we, we start with uh, with pain. So you, <laughs> you work with uh, with different you know organizations, different customer organizations, and you know determine what their pain points are, where, where they're hurting. Because mm -hmm. nobody ever really has the time to produce you know, detailed requirements of what they need. So you, you find out where the pain is, and then you, you kind of dive in and prototype something. And I, you know, I think the, the coolest initial cases were simply situations where something had gone wrong with, serv with the service. Something was clearly amiss, and yet you had these, these multiple groups each scrambling in their own little tool sets trying to figure out what was going on. Mm -hmm. And we were able often with, with Splunk to very, very quickly link what was being observed in terms of issues with the service to what the, the platforms were saying you know, regarding the you know, syslog and, and mm -hmm. some SMP data and such, telling you what's going on with the platform. Mm -hmm. And you can really quickly, really easily provide a view that shows you Okay, here's where your service is failing, and that exactly right there is the, you know, the underlying cause, because you can link what's happening with the machine data from the platform perspective with what's being observed with the service. Mm -hmm. And we had a number of cases like that where we had a number of people in mad scrambles, we had war rooms, we have you know, <laughs> these long operations calls, and we're able to just quickly dive in, grab data, mm -hmm. whip something together, mm -hmm. and, and illustrate the, the root cause of the problem. Mm -hmm. So, and not to belabor the point, but mm -hmm. with the old approach, with the more rigid relational approach, you, yeah. where you have to know the question you want to ask beforehand, yep. it sounds like that wouldn't be possible doing that kind of oh, uh, analysis. Yeah. And so clearly, you know, that's that's a, uh, an area where it's interesting, I'd love to talk more um, mm -hmm. about at some point, you know, how you see this kind of impacting some of those mm -hmm. traditional vendors who take that approach, but mm -hmm. uh, I know Jeff wants to get some oh, yeah, questions yeah. as well. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, it's, just, it's just interesting too with, with telecom and really the growth of data centers and we're constantly hearing about mm -hmm. next gen data centers and obviously cloud is huge and, yeah. and you know public cloud and hybrid mm -hmm. clouds and, and private clouds mm -hmm. and you guys are the stuff that's actually up in the cloud that's, yep. that's metal and electricity. So I wonder if yep. you could talk a bit mm -hmm. about how your business is growing and transforming because mm -hmm. of this cloud transformation and the additional challenges that 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 kind of rate of growth is is kind of throwing it your way when you've got yeah. to fix things. Yep. Oh, absolutely. It's uh, you know it's a matter of uh, scrambling to keep up with with mad growth in in areas. Certainly, cloud is is one of them, and also uh, you know services delivered via the cloud, and it's uh, it's certainly a, a challenge of tying together all of the pieces involved in the service delivery because you. you you have now, I, I think, a scenario where you often have uh, not only bundled you know, the services and functionality, but you have everything sort of coexisting in a virtual environment. Right. And uh, it, it does offer, though, I think, some tremendous advantages in terms of not only the simplicity in provisioning, but also the ability to establish a more sort of consistent and, and controllable environment for those services. But it's, it's a learning curve. Because <laughs> for the consumer of the cloud, I just want it to turn on, turn off. Yeah you know, add yeah. my stuff, pull my stuff down. But right. but from your point of view, and supporting mm -hmm. that and architecting it, you know, mm -hmm. it's real stuff that's got to be connected, it's got to work together, and you've got yep. to actually execute on that vision. So, I mean, is 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 taking a cloud-based uh, architecture approach from a delivery point of view actually mm -hmm. easier uh, from your side? I think ultimately it's easier, yes. But there's there's a, a substantial sort of upfront investment in, in you know, expertise and in and, and establishing a, an architecture that's going to be very robust and support the rapid you know, rapid deployment. That's that's really the key. And, and, mm -hmm. and following up on Jeff's question, I mean, how is this approach with new tools mm -hmm. like Splunk so different than the old approach with the old yeah. tools? Well, and I think the key is that you need tools that are inherently flexible and extensible, and you need tools that uh, are within within our control to a degree. I mean, the, the thing is, as a, as a service provider, you need the ability to, to quickly go in with your knowledge of the particular, you know, the subject matter you're working with and the, the problem you're trying to solve. And you need to be able to quickly iterate through the through the solutions without depending on, uh, you know, rigid technologies or, or you know, 
uh, undue vendor uh, engagement. Right, you can't really iterate yeah. if you're if you if you have to go back to uh, a data modeler to build a new schema, right. and it's going to take three months. Yep. That's, that's not an iterative approach. That's, no. that, unless yeah. you, you've got to be able to ask a question, not get quite the answer you were looking for, yep. iterate, ask a new question. And that's something that yep. some of these new approaches uh, provide. Um, so I, I want to get your take a little bit on kind of Splunk's model. So mm -hmm. we've talked to a lot of clients here, customers of Splunk, and they. A lot of them started kind of small with Splunk and then moved to oh, yeah. different use cases. Can you yep. kind of walk us through how that evolved in your organization? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we've, we've started, as I said, with the initial tactical focus, simply on parsing log data to, uh, to get at, you know, operational issues with platforms and such, and uh, extended then into sort of the service layer where we have a lot more data related to the services we're delivering to our customers and with a focus really on, on operational support. Mm -hmm. But then we, we quickly discovered that that same underlying data set and that same functionality provided by Splunk can then be leveraged for uh, executive dashboards and presentation, for trend analysis and, and you know, true analytics, mm -hmm. and in fact for business intelligence type functionality as well. Because oftentimes the, the underlying data set is actually very much overlapping and, and often you know, identical. Mm -hmm. So what, what we've done is really to, uh, to begin our initial development with an operational focus, but then uh, as, we've, as we've developed the, the operational tools, we've discovered more and more use cases that can be readily supported in, in other realms, in, in planning and engineering, even in marketing and, and you know, uh, product management and such. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, interesting. So, does and and how does does or doesn't Splunk's kind of um, licensing model allow you to yeah. expand yes. in that in that way? Yeah. yeah, and and I think the the licensing model in in my mind is um, is really key because it's simple. It's mm -hmm. it's simple. It's clear cut. There there's none of this you know back and forth around what uh, which feature sets you you have licenses for and. Uh, you know, complex, higher order math around any of that. And, and the, the simplicity is extraordinarily important in, in my mind. Mm -hmm. the, the other really key development and, and something I've been very focused on at, at Comp is now with 6.2, I, I think the availability of even uh, you know, simpler uh, pivot type models and, uh, and I think tools that will really allow those uh, BI type users mm. to, uh, to quickly become comfortable and productive with Splunk. So when you say BI, you mean more mm -hmm. kind of on the reporting side versus more yeah. the interactive real-time operational yes. uh, analytics? Yes. And, and also, well some of it is I think real-time because you have um, uh, impact of various marketing approaches and understanding of what's happening with your various products. I mean it's, uh, but yeah it's really I, I think the, um, the analytics in the, in the business realm uh, as opposed to you know, so much in the in the operational mm -hmm. realm. Mm, interesting, because mm -hmm. if you, in in Godfrey uh, Godfrey's keynote yesterday, he kind of put mm -hmm. up that slide that showed the old EDW BI model and mm -hmm. then kind of the new Splunk approach. Yep. Um, and in your case, it sounds like Splunk is disrupting not just the underlying relational database, mm -hmm. but also even up to the to that layer, the EDW and the BI space as yep. well. Oh, I, I think so. Yep. Very interesting. Yeah, it's, uh, it is interesting because at the end of the day it's about getting the right information to the right people at the right time, right? So they can take action and they can do something with it. And I'm just curious, kind of the people that have more of a traditional BI approach, knowledge, experience, expertise, mm -hmm. how are they, um, what's their reception to this style of, of BI, I guess? Well, I, I think the, uh, the initial reception has been quite positive in that um, there's uh, kind of Shock and awe when when people see what, what you can produce and how quickly you can produce it. It's it's really very very appealing. I, I think the next step though is to get to a point where those same uh, users are comfortable uh, producing the, those views for themselves. You know, it's it's one thing to impress them with how rapidly you can develop uh, right, views right. of the data. Um, the the next step though is. Uh, to impress them with how quickly they can produce those views of the data. So and I, I think these new tools are going to enable that. Well, right, so moving to mm -hmm. that self-service model. <laughs> right, um, exactly. So, so expand on that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Does Splunk make it possible for a really a non-technical person to do that, or is that something you think they I need think to invest getting in there. more? Yeah, and, and I think with, with the latest, uh, with 6.1.2 and, and now with 6.2, um, that's a lot of what's being introduced, is the ability to work with, with data models and with pivots and such, which are intuitively familiar to you know, data analysts, people who have grown up using Excel and Pivot and you know, VLOOKUP and all those, mm -hmm. those nifty tools. Well, yeah, that's mm -hmm. interesting. I mean, we've been hearing about kind of that self-service, moving to the self-service business mm -hmm. intelligence model for 
10, 15 years, yep. and it's still, the traditional BI space is kind of stalled out. Mm -hmm. at, you know, if you, the, the metrics you usually hear is 20% of any given organization is actually using right. these BI tools. Right. They've never really been able to crack that number. Yep. Um, so what's it going to take to do that? Is it just simply mm -hmm. bringing in tools that kind of mimic Excel and mm -hmm. the tools that people know and understand, or what's it going to take to kind of break through that number? Oh, I, I think it's the intuitive interface and the intuitive tools, mm -hmm. and I, I think that uh, pivots are, are particularly effective in, in that area. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, what else are you looking for from Splunk? I mean, as we mm -hmm. look forward and, and we're here next year talking to you, what are some mm -hmm. of the things you're hoping to, to hear being announced from Splunk or, or areas where you hope they invest over the next 12 months? Well, I'd, I think um, a, a lot of what I, I would be looking for personally is sort of uh, consolidation of some of the, the functionality that's already been introduced. I mean, there are things like the, uh, the ability to connect to external databases uh, via you know, DB Connect is, in my mind, extraordinarily important, as is uh, Hunk. Because you know, Splunk has, has always been very good, I think, at coexisting with other tools, with other solutions. Mm -hmm. and, and those sorts of capabilities really add tremendously to the, to the functionality. And so I, I think from, from my perspective, the, the real key is continuing to sort of uh, extend and, uh, and you know, harden those, those sorts of capabilities and, uh, and integrate them more fully. Mm -hmm. Because the, uh, it's extraordinarily powerful when you, when you can take something uh, like Splunk and, and have it uh, leverage reference data, topology data, you know, all these uh, external data stores and also coexist with, uh, with Hadoop and HDFS and, and then uh, potentially do so in a, in a cloud environment. I mean, that, that becomes an extraordinarily powerful environment. Mm -hmm. You can kind of span different use cases, different underlying yep. storage and, and other architectural yep. approaches, uh, yep. kind of unifying those in a way that you can't do with more point solutions. Exactly. Yep. All right, well, we're out of time, unfortunately. Matt, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate Certainly. it. Great insights. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll be right back after this next segment. Please stick mm -hmm. around. Excellent.